This is gonna be good. What is up, guys? TW Booty Honey here with another hot take video for you. And brace yourselves. But I gotta tell you something that's probably gonna be pretty obvious to most people. And that is Seinfeld is better than Friends. How oh, is it not obvious? It's not obvious to me at all. But yes, to me, it's an undisputed fact that Seinfeld is better than Friends. Some of the reasons that I personally believe that it is a better, that it's better than Friends. Uh, but before I go into any of those reasons and stuff like that, uh, it's no secret that Friends that Friends fans seem to hate Seinfeld fans. It was like an ever ongoing war uh, between you know the. It was seeming like it was such an ongoing war between you know stuffy com comedy snob fans or you know comedy snobs or like you know Seinfeld fans friends fans all that type of stuff uh but it's really important to note that there are a couple things that friends of course I feel did better than Seinfeld as well and I'll try to delve into those as much as I can but one thing I'll definitely say is that it's really difficult to create and perform characters that are as lovable as the ensemble on Friends. I, I personally feel that, you know, especially in the series finale, that Friends uh, really had a stronger conclusion than Seinfeld's, which I got to be honest, Seinfeld's finale was, I absolutely could not stand it. I absolutely hated the whole two-part finale of Seinfeld. But that is another rant to get into on an entirely separate video. But yeah, having said that, the characters and friends are basically just like walking, talking, joke books. Whereas characters on Seinfeld, they actually feel like real people. And the humor is actually drawn from that. Everything that is funny is because they're their true selves. You know, the cast, Jason Alexander, Michael Richards, uh... Julie, Louise Dreyfus, and Jerry Seinfeld, you know, it because they are so true to their characters. They're so true to their characterization. And I think it just comes from the cast of people naturally just being funny uh, within themselves, you know. And, and that's a really good thing. Kramer, Michael Richards, you know, he, yeah, Michael Richards, who plays Kramer, he's such a funny character. Whereas Ross, which I guess you could maybe say is the Kramer of the show. He's really a character who just says funny crap, you know? That's really all it is. And Rachel and Monica could basically swap most of their lines, and literally no one would be able to tell either the two apart. Whereas you definitely sure as hell can't do that with Jerry and George because there is a drastic difference between those two. Especially with the fact of George being a lot more neurotic uh, in yeah, being very neurotic and a hypochondriac, as opposed to Jerry, who's usually very calm and collected uh, most times. But another thing I definitely got to address are the situations. And the situations are pretty important in situational comedy, of course, uh, especially with the, you know, being situational comedy. But here's the thing, where that comedy comes from in sitcoms, really tend to be a lot funnier if the situation actually feels relatable like something that you've gone through it could literally like something that could happen in real life seinfeld definitely it's called a show about nothing but yet it seems to relate to almost every human experience that has happened at some point or another to all of us before and that's what i really like about Seinfeld is that they legit focused on that aspect of real life. Well, friends really kind of had more larger than life plots about, you know, you know, cooking and, you know, chopping off a toe, having a pet monkey. But I'm like, dude, do most people really have pet monkeys? Honestly, no one can really relate to that. There's not a lot of people in the world that have pet monkeys, which it's cool to have like larger than life characters, larger than life situations. But sometimes, really most times, people like 
the situations to relate to what's going on in their lives so they can maybe get a good laugh out of it or maybe even feel better about what's going on in their personal lives. But, yeah, that, that's really the thing. People can really relate to what happens on Seinfeld, like being stuck in a parking lot, you know, being stuck in a giant freaking parking lot, you know, waiting for a table in a Chinese restaurant or just any restaurant in general and then arguing who's going to pay at the restaurant, you know, with your parents and stuff like that. I, it's like a lot of those situations a lot of people can really relate to. Um, and yeah. And another thing I really want to add are the punchlines. The punchlines for me, like, that's the thing. Friends went, they just seem like they kind of went for the cheapest laughs. That's one thing I will always criticize friends for. And the writers really seem like they kind of took the easy route by having characters insult each other and really like hitting the easiest targets or just saying something sarcastic. And it's like, however, in Seinfeld, all the jokes serve a story. There's always a punchline and there's a payoff, even in the earlier setup or a two or like it basically where like two stories tie really well together. The humor is a lot more smarter in, I guess you could say, like sophisticated and Seinfeld, where there's really not room for that kind of humor in friends it's just oh that's funny and you know that's it it's not really much that can really be taken apart from that it doesn't really take much craft or skill as it would for the jokes in like seinfeld because some of the jokes in seinfeld you really got to like kind of i I guess here again you really got to kind of think about it more to like really kind of get it Oh, man, and there's another thing that I really love about Seinfeld uh, over Friends, personally, is the dialogue. Seinfeld easily has its own very distinct dialogue, which, you know, kind of has the whole kind of Abbott and Costello routine, especially with Jerry and George. They're really great at that. Or you could say even like Newman and Kramer sometimes. But, yeah. Everyone really, and basically, if you're not familiar with Abbott and Costello, you know, they're this really old kind of like comedy duo that really kind of, like, their comedy was based on, like, how they could kind of, like, go back and forth with each other in a really good way. But, yeah, the thing about it with Seinfeld is a lot of people really remember how the conversations in Seinfeld really go. Like I was mentioning before with Abbott and Costello, a very snappy back and forth, you know, among the group. And it keeps a really decent pace. The show's dialogue has a real kind of poetic rhythm to it. And it's great for dialogue lovers. I can't really say I'm much of a dialogue lover. But it's one thing that I definitely do notice while watching the show. Because most times I, it, I don't pay too much attention to the dialogue. But with this show, it really, it really does capture my attention. But as for Friends, the dialogue... It doesn't really have that at all. It just seems like, ooh, it's just two people talking. No one's bouncing off each other. You know, there's no riffing. You know, it's, yeah, it's like, it's just, hey, funny joke. <laughs> like, and that's the thing. The writers of Seinfeld really, like, and I think it's easy for the writers of Seinfeld because you got people who have worked in comedy. You know, you got people. Uh, like Larry David, you got people like a Seinfeld, you know, who really love the art and beauty of language that really cherish that sort of thing. And it might sound like a over, it may sound like I'm trying to like ingrandize it, over ingrandize it, or trying to make it sound pretty. It's really not. That's truly what I believe that kind of goes on in the show. And And again, Seinfeld has really good dialogue compared to Friends. And even, dude, the acting is super on par, bro. The acting is so great and on par. Like I said, the cast, Lone, Jason Alexander, Julie Louise Dreyfus, Michael Richards, and Jerry Seinfeld, three of the greatest comedic actors, or mainly in case of, like, Jason, Julia, and Michael Richards, while Jerry's, you know, he's a comedian. But as for the other three, 
great comedic actors who pretty much, dude, they fit into their roles absolutely perfectly. And Jerry Seinfeld, yeah, that you could say he might not be the best actor, but he's not, but like I said, he's not an actor. He's a comedian. He's a well known comedian. He's one of the greatest stand up comics of all time. So I think that's what really kind of works for him. In he has such perfect comedic timing, obviously, being Jerry Seinfeld. In Wayne Knight, who is played by Newman, of course, delivers every Newman dialogue and monologue is like so beautifully bro i'm telling you it's like a shakespeare play man it's like this guy is just going off on his own kind of like when he speaks you know goes on his little tangents i'm telling you man it's almost like seeing guys like the rock it's seeing guys like la Knight. it's seeing people like the miz kind of go off on their promos it's like the roster nowadays like if i gotta talk about wrestling at all a lot of the wwe roster i swear to god could learn a thing or two about like really kind of going into monologues and all that kind of stuff and cutting promos in the way that wayne knight does it because ugh, let me not even get into that but yeah but again if I got to talk about friends and compare it to friends, Jennifer Anderson, she and she just kind of delivers every line like she's surprised. And Matthew Perry, you know, rest in peace, of course, he delivers all his jokes, which just like a really arrogant smirk. And it's not really acting. It's just like, eh. that's basically just what it is. And mind you, call me pretty biased here. I guess for this whole video or just in general. Um, for me, a, another aspect of it is rewatchability. Like for me, Seinfeld episodes are so complex, so dense, so packed with little jokes and moments and details that stand thousands upon thousands of rewatches and it never gets old. I can sit here like literally what I do during the day, you know, like is like if like during the weekdays and stuff like that seinfeld would almost always come on on comedy central around like two o'clock to like six o'clock and you know it pretty much just cycles every seinfeld episode up into the beginning up until the very end and it never gets old for me it really never gets old i could re-watch this series like if literally seinfeld was the only thing on i could ever watch on tv I'm telling you, I would die a happy man. It never gets old for me, and it's very few shows that can really do that for me. And that really doesn't have very many bad episodes to it either. And, yeah, there's some bad episodes, uh, but I probably might mention them in another video. There's some weak spots. And, you know, after season, it's like in the later seasons, it really does start to take a decline and it really does kind of like, especially with some episodes feeling like certified uh, George Costanza torture porns. But that's really just me. Um, meanwhile, uh, with Friends, it, it's really, really hard to get into any of the episodes because it just seems like if you watched one episode, you've pretty much seen them all. It's, it's not really anything that... I could sink my teeth into, but anyways, uh, with all that being said, I know there's probably a good bit more stuff that I probably could have mentioned, such as the storytelling and all that other type of stuff, uh, but for me, I just want to kind of make this video as like short and concise as humanly possible, my opinions as to why I feel Seinfeld is much, much a far superior show than Friends. But if you agree with this hot take, if it is a hot take at all, then feel free to let me know down in the comment section down below how you, uh, you know, if you agree with it or why you agree with it. Let me know if you disagree with it and why you disagree with it in the comment section down below also. And if you want to continue to see more hot take videos like these in other videos that I do in the future, such as review videos, let's play videos, uh, tier list videos, smash or pass then feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, and 
click that notification bell uh, for all notifications right next to that subscribe button so that you never miss an upload from yours truly. And until then, this has been your boy, T.W. Pony Hunter, giving you guys another banger. And I will see you guys next time. Friends, fans, cope and sieve. Thank you for being an ass and not watching the whole video. You didn't listen to a single damn thing I said. Thank you for being an ass, only hearing what you wanted to, and getting butt hurt like the sensitive little bitch you are. Thank you for being an ass.